All this is Dr. Mubin Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So here we are doing the chit chat here. Parth was saying chit chat here. Yes. <laughs> Parth, how are you doing? So how is everyone? Long time no see on this chit chat channel. <laughs> Number 10. Hope it's a great power nap. So, uh, Cynthia, I have to uh, start the channel and then wait for a few minutes uh, before the YouTube tells people that, hey, we are here. So JR says, did Dr. Bean take a test? I didn't take a test. <laughs> I have become pretty good at understanding what happened. But um, you could say that, fine, it may not be it. But it was an interesting set of uh, symptoms, an interesting way of uh, how they evolved. The symptoms in my previous infections versus this were very interestingly more focused this time on fatigue, joint pains, muscle pains, shortness of breath, urinary frequency. Um, I mentioned them in the last one. And the management. There were some things that were managing it like magic. Um, Luffy did not man manage my brain fog. Coconut oil managed my brain fog like this. Antihistamine... Um, uh, inhaler manages my uh, shortness of breath magically well. So whatever was underlying pathology, it's a very interesting um, symptom set and management. And now it is the 10th day. So from the whole package, it seems to be, I haven't yet seen another newer pathology that encompasses this whole set. Same here, Tex, uh, Skyfrog. But it was very interesting. I became aware of tinnitus. That was the total change that I would think about it and say, yeah, I have tinnitus. I even one day started thinking when I was young and I noticed it for the first time, how I asked people, do you have this sound in your ear? Nurse on duty, thank you very much. Okay, so what's happening? What are we just chatting? <laughs> Skyfrog is here. Surviving in med school. Come on, man. Fall in love with medicine. Nipa says all good. Mega Muzi says, hey, hey. Rand says, I love you, but why did you get, get out to dinner if you had symptoms? So... I think that the viral stage had been over. I went out to dinner 10 days after. So that was okay. I had shortness of breath. This shortness of breath is not a um, viral symptom. It is the pro-inflammatory symptom. It is actually possibly mast cell triggers as well or histamine trigger too. So I went out after 10 days. So last Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. You made it? Okay. The newer production by my wife. Okay. Sigrid says, did you get itchy skin? I did get itchy skin for a couple of days, but I didn't think much of it. Now that you say it, I did.
Yes. So channel name says statins after mitochondria. Yes. They do affect mitochondria. However, melatonin is a better thing for mitochondria. So John says, uh, still trying my silver bullet for vaccine injury. John, have you seen FLCCC? I think that LDN will be very good. Uh, again, no medical advice, uh, but also see FLCCC. Apologies, this, this handle is so rounded and small that it is just slipping from my hand. Augie says uh, dissociation was really freaky. Correct. Shortness of breath is bothersome. I can't walk 50 feet without being out of breath. It is so bothersome and it makes me so anxious. Um, and my palpitations were because of two reasons, I guess. One was I was becoming anxious with the shortness of breath. And second, I think just like unity frequency, if I look at that from an autonomic dysfunction, then that means um, the shortness of, sorry, palpitations were that as well. So Sandy says, are you sleeping now? Yes. So yesterday, last night, I slept for the first time or maybe the second time, much better, or almost normal. I actually, so over the weekend, even Friday evening, I felt I slept well. So if I was exposed somewhere on Thursday and the incubation time was so fast that by Friday lecture, I was becoming shortness. I was having shortness of breath. So the interesting that I think it was really triggering of the antibodies or response from the body kicked in very fast as well. And that response, it in turn caused the symptoms. I think virus didn't get a chance to stay on for a long time, but the response, the immune dysregulation or immune response was there. And I believe in Zach Hack. Thank you very much for becoming a member. And I believe in uh, Prozon effect. I mentioned it. Does anyone remember Prozon or Hook effect? <laughs> Marsha says, how many times have you? So I think this was the fourth time. And for me, if I was not breathless and didn't have fatigue and muscle pains, for me, it was lighter than any of the common colds I ever had. My common colds put me on the bed for a couple of days. This was nothing. And I cannot, during the common cold, I become so foggy, I cannot do anything. This was nothing but shortness of breath, palpitations, fatigue, muscle pains, um, urinary frequency. That was just weird. And it bothered me. So when it was happening, I was thinking about both Katri study and, and US study. I was saying, to a point, US study is observing something interesting, and that is if the frequency of infection is more often, then the person can just keep becoming sick. Katri study was more like youngsters, and they have a still uh, better outcome. Ariana says, so sorry for you. Actually, uh, so I do not know how people perceive it. I think everyone perceives it in different ways. For me, it is actually interesting that I know this is what will happen. So the very first time I got it, remember, I had cough and congestion and runny nose and all that. And this time I had nothing. So generally, it's interesting that I'm just getting out of it.
Zach Hack says, can generalized mitochondrial damage cause shortness of breath? Yes. Not really shortness of breath, but it can cause feeling. This cup is really heavy. <laughs> and I have to hold it with this one. So it is tiny. I think this is the one. It's very heavy. It's actually very thick. Just put it here. Um, so the mitochondrial damage can create if anaerobic environment, which in turn can cause acid production, which in turn can lead the body to think we are hypoxic. Um, so <clears throat> the question to answer for the athletes is is that related to for example vaccine or infection or mitochondrial damage I have to actually so I'm aware of the sudden adult death syndrome SADS we used to study about the sudden cardiac death syndrome the question is the actual pathology. I haven't really read any studies. So, Zach, I think I will pick that up as a study to read before I open my mouth about it. <laughs> Skyfrog says, interesting that we were once short of, yes. Now not many people use them, even with symptoms. It's it's a diff you're correct. Lisu says, are there any studies on the reinfections of frequency between the vaccinated and unvaccinated who have had COVID at least once? I haven't seen this exact question answered, but. Um, I would still, some people actually think that whoever is vaccinated gets more infections. And uh, for example, I'm sure that my reinfection will be put in that bucket as well, that somehow the vaccine did this. There are some people who just don't get it. So that's a different category. Then there are some people who get it asymptomatically. That's a different category. Then there are some who get it mild, some who get it severe, some who have even died. So the, the question here that is it related to vaccine or not vaccine, that doesn't have any bearing on this. It is unfortunate that there is such a vast um, set of incorrect uh, information. I don't want to use the word misinformation or disinformation. That's just too abused word. Incorrect information. And that incorrect information comes from our healthcare authorities too. Similarly, there is a lot of incorrect information where people are being misled. For example, saying more people in the hospital who are vaccinated. Yeah, sure. There is a bigger, larger group who is vaccinated. And vaccinated, most of them in the beginning were those who had the um, risk factors. And if their vaccine has waned, then they are still at risk. So um, cohort size matters as well. So it's just there are some leaders on various in various dimensions of this disease: vaccine, not vaccine, mask, not mask, lockdowns, not lockdowns. Some have a correct message, and some are just they are off the, the rails. <sighs> Rosbe Tamuri says, I had the Pfizer shot and had descending paralysis and high D-dimer 10 days after the vaccine. Now I have a heart murmur. How long 
I'm so sorry, I cannot give a medical advice in general. So even if you told me how long, I cannot do that. The best thing I can do is to request you to look at FLCCC. There are protocols there for various conditions. Um, I hope you recover. The reason I asked how long is that many times vaccine injured continue to gradually become better as well over time. Uh, <clears throat> Veronica says, could the immune system cytokine storm be triggered due to an error of signaling like it acts as the body itself is an injury trying to close the wound, hence the blood clots? So it is this blood clotting in the context of COVID has other reasons, but generally blood clotting that is occurring, for, a, for example, the cardiovascular issues, even with the COVID, a lot of them are because of autoimmune disorders where your description can be actually put forward as a way of describing autoimmune disorders where body attacks itself. And that can cause clots as well. Andrew says, my wife has lost taste and smell after recovering from this variant. First time infected that we know of. Is this normal? It is normal. And many people just get it back within a couple of weeks. Some do not. In that case, there is a, a Luffy kind of a thing that can help. Check FLCCC. I had requested specifically to say, can you please add the paragraph for anosmia? Edmund, I have not seen that. I will check it out. Yes, I saw that, Brad. $10.3 million payout for the uh, mandated uh, religious exception bypass. But interestingly, I mean, one part of that is that those who were fired are eligible to come back, meaning I'm sure that company had fired them and put in their records that fired for a reason they cannot reapply. Now they can reapply, but they have lost their jobs. Still, at least it is a step in the right direction. And without taking a side for vaccine or not vaccine, the right direction that if they had an exemption, then why did they not get it? Roller Girl says, no Zoom on my phone or laptop worked for walk. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, why not? Ramnik says, I love this show. It helps with stress, with chat and art. Thank you very much. Um, Elijah says, I love your show. Q&A is the best. Could you clarify effects of black cumin, seed and honey on Omicron BA4 and 5? So as you may have seen that study that I talked about, Nigella, Sataiwan, honey, the effects were really not the virus, but the body's behavior or response to the virus. That means it doesn't matter BA4 or 5. These things should still be helpful. Now, the, the amount of help is different and how fast should they be taken. In my opinion, what I usually do is I just keep taking them. I had not been taking Nigella and honey for months now. <laughs> I got punished by reinfection. Parth says, any idea about the neuro-linguistic programming? No. That's a good question. Parth, you're asking me your exam questions. <laughs> uh, 
Raghav says, have you looked into people with long COVID recovering from it? Yes. There are many that recover and there are many that do not recover or are slowly recovering. So cigarette says urinary frequency incontinence has been frustrating. Is this common? So it happened to me. I didn't have incontinence, but I had, I will go to the restroom. I'll come back and five minutes later, I'll have to go to the restroom again. And that was just that frequency. And here, nine, 10 days later, 10 days or 11 days, how many days? Today's Monday. If I go back here, started Thursday, that is 21. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12th day. But yesterday I was fine, day before I was fine. So it became okay. And if it does not become okay, uh, please do talk with your doctor. They should look at not just the possibility of UTI, but also the possibility of uh, sympathetic or autonomic dysregulation, because it could be that too. Uh, Roller Girl says, what was the passcode for Zoom? If you are registered on Zoom and you sign in, then you don't need a passcode. You just click on the link. There is no passcode. M. Gregory says, isn't urinary frequency diabetic symptom too? That is too, correct. So in case of diabetes, what happens is there are two things that happen for urinary frequency. There can be many problems, but two interesting one. One is the presence of glucose in the urine causes bacteria to flourish. And so UTIs cause irritation and frequency. And secondly, presence of glucose or filtration of glucose in the kidney pulls water with it as well. Glucose loves to be friends with water. So wherever glucose goes, water goes. So when the glucose comes and filters in the kidney and then becomes urine or part of urine, it pulls water with it. So then the volume of water is increased. Because of that, there is frequency. Now, when the patient is losing more water, patient becomes more thirsty. So then automatically patient starts drinking more. So they get polyuria and polydipsia. Many times patient thinks it the other way around. They think I'm drinking more water, that's why I'm urinating more. But generally because in diabetes case, because they're urinating more, their body is making them thirsty to go drink more. Of course, frequency, I mean, there is prostate possibility. There can be actual irritant and infection. There could be irritation for other reasons as well. So I'm just talking about some. This is a good question. Vin says, is it fair to say people suffering from long COVID have a better long-term outlook than the vaccine injured? So I have seen long COVID... Um, suffering and not recovering as fast and i've seen vaccine injured in a similar way however this will be fair that i've seen more injury more severe form of injury with vaccine now long covid before the vaccine folks pick up paperweights and throw them at me infection and the long covid there are two things that are collated in long COVID that are combined or wrapped together, unfortunately. One is long COVID because of the severe disease causing organ damage. For example, baby lung syndrome, where the lungs have shrunk because of scars and fibrosis. Those lungs are never going to become normal again. So if we call that as long COVID, that is a post-infection long COVID, that will never be recovery, uh, recovered. What I am talking about is that long COVID where patient becomes okay, recovers from COVID, then develops symptoms that continue on, 
usually I've seen these patients recovering better, although slowly, but recovering better than vaccine. But even in the case of infection, if they are hospitalized and their pancreas is damaged or their lungs are damaged or their um, cardiovascular system is damaged or their brain tissue is damaged, then they have a serious problem that would never be recovered. So both areas have serious side effects. <laughs> Cynthia, what does this mean? Not wiggly blood flow. <laughs> so wiggly always makes me laugh. And here is the background, Cynthia. Uh, when we came to US, my sons were tiny, small, <laughs> tiny and small, young. One was three and one was seven. So the younger son, he went out one day with the bicycle to ride his we used to live in a neighborhood which had which had this uh, um, cul-de-sac so he would go out and uh, ride his bicycle there and he had training wheels and one day he came in and he was crying and he said it is wiggly and what he meant was one of the tra <clears throat> training wheels was coming off of it and it was wiggling so I haven't forgotten it is wiggly Abdullah Musa says, I had BA5, COVID, three weeks. I had symptoms only one day. Will I still be immune now? Yes. Look, think about it for a second. You got the infection, your body handled it within a week, within a day. <laughs> what else do you want from your body? That is the immunity. It proved to you that, hey, I have it. Now, until the virus changes, I've said it many, many times, or your body changes. Uh your body has already demonstrated to you that, hey, if this virus comes in, this is what I'll do. Michelle says, it, I think it's safe to say most would benefit from intermittent fasting and cutting out sugar and uh, processed foods. I think it is fair to say. Alicia says, loves in the air. So Elnik says, is there any data studies currently on ocular melanoma possibly caused by COVID shots or other kinds of cancer? Thank you. I haven't, they, if there are, I haven't read. So it will be unfair of me to say no. I haven't read them. Barbara says, Cynthia explained in the seven. No, no worries. I just found it funny. My son uh, said it is wiggly, and I still remember it. Thank you for <laughs> blocking the love chat. <laughs> Somehow these bots know that they need to bring us love. <laughs> okay, so talking about that, I want to um request the cool beans and i will repeat that a couple of times in these discussions so that those who may not be watching today can also hear it there are some cool beans that have become little uh, that have become friends with each other and nothing bad in that however some of the cool beans are turning out to not be so cool and they are asking for inappropriate things. Um, this is not correct. And I would say to everyone here, this community primarily gathered here to study, learn, um, maybe watch some cartoons with me, <laughs> right? 
And so other than that, none of us know each other and do not know our personal lives. So when you trust someone, please be careful. And number two, for the sake of this community, if you are here and even if you have any such objectives, I would ask you to not engage in this way. And um, some of the names are sent to me. If, if this continues, then I'll have to start removing some people. I have no idea what uh, JR, what catfishing means, but it just is not correct. Um, just, do you know that sometimes I block people? Usually, my first reason to block is when they start attacking others. That is what I just totally do not like it. We are all here, we are discussing things, Many of you, I think, are primarily connected with me and my work. Getting attacked by someone is not fun because you are here to try to learn something and you are putting in some comment that you honestly felt about it. At the same time, there are some that attack me as well. I try to ignore that. But... When I see that somebody makes it their mission that they'll go from one comment to the next comment and just keep copy pasting the same insults to me or to others, then I block them. It is very interesting for me that some folks actually think it is their right to be here and to, to insult others. And they think it should be okay because this is freedom of expression. So it is not freedom of expression because you are in our home. This is a Cool Beans home. This is a private channel which is on a private platform. Just like YouTube can kick me out anytime they want. Similarly, I can remove someone who is not complying or who is not good for the community guidelines. Complying with the community guidelines. So Imagine when you are here, imagine if you we are all sitting in a living room. We are not sitting on the side of a road. It is not a Hyde Park. And even if we were standing on the side of a road, you still need a permission or permit to go and do a little um, speech there. So it is a place where we are all sitting together discuss, discussing things. So attacking others or now I'm hearing trying to take advantage of others or asking for inappropriate favors, that is not right. And I can block. I For the two and a half years, my intent has been that regardless of whose politics is what or their belief is what, or they think masks are good or bad, or vaccines are good or bad, or doctors are good or bad. I have tried to provide as much clarity as I can bring, which has created a risk as well that I could be telling wrong. I may have misinterpreted wrong, but there is a good intention in this all. I would like this to be in the community in general, a good intention. Vin says, my analogy is that you bought a house. It has 10 rooms, but only three to four keys. The doors can never be opened without keys. Yes. Okay to let go says, good night, good night. Okay to let go. Correct. I am actually, Barbara, very much proud of this community for a reason. 
that reason is and i have not seen talked to majority of us 99.99% have not seen them talked in person some of the cool beans i have maybe two or three the the pride that i have is that we have not gathered here just to get reporting we actually youtube shows that your viewers also watch these channels or your viewers just watched this video so i can sometimes see that where we are all going and seeing and what we are doing so there are many folks who do reporting there are people who are good at fear mongering there are people who are good at explaining there are people who are brief there are all kind of presenters the kind that we have is mechanisms of pathology and medicine and reasons of various thoughts in medicine that is nowhere to be found and that is what we are we even our doctors uh, for average cool bean here even their doctor in some areas no lesser than them Sirafik says, I know you can't give medical advice, but is clotting six to eight weeks after infection common? So some of the tinnitus or other cardiovascular issues are a result of clotting and D-dimers. And yes, it will continue to become better if it is because of infection. The only thing is clotting can cause damage. Damage being, for example, let's say ear damage which can cause tinnitus forever or heart issues or other tissue problems. So it should be managed aggressively and it can be managed. There are ways to manage clotting. Blood thinners are used. It should just be managed aggressively. So by the time the body's mechanism that is causing clotting is settling down, the damage does not occur. Abdullah says, I do intermittent fasting, Umad, for four years. Do you think that's why I only was symptom? Maybe. The, the problem is we really cannot say what was your body's state. How did it handle it so fast and so well? So can't say. But anything that you do positive for your body's better behavior is going to be contributing. So Gold Time says, how does hypo, hyponatremia, less sodium, is managed after COVID? Can it occur due to the high blood glucose levels or is it linked to COVID? So uh, endocrine dysfunction can cause hyponatremia, persistent hyponatremia. Hyponatremia can occur if we get more water in us and sodium becomes relatively less or if our sodium intake is reduced. But if it is persistently, we are hyponatremic, it's not a very comfortable thing, very good thing. And endocrine workup should be done to understand why it is happening. Lynn D says, Dr. Bean, have you heard anything about euthanasia? contributing to a high death rate from COVID patients in New Zealand? I do not. That's a very interesting thing. Is it legal there? I think it is. But I have not heard that. <laughs> Admiration says, here to cheer on. John says, dandelion, dandelion is good.
Diane says, Dr. Bean, so you set the standards for open-mindedness and respect and kindness. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you very much. And I am actually grateful for the community. If you go back to my previous video, you'll see a lot of people now becoming upset. Some say, because you were vaccinated, that's why it happened. Some would make fun of me. Some would insult me. Some would uh, play some good comments, some constructive things. I am usually okay with that. But when somebody just starts attacking others, and now those who are becoming friends, I actually am very happy that people are becoming friends. If you think about it, our community is generally those individuals who were looking to understand more. It is not that I just by chance appeared in front of you and you just saw my face and said, awesome, I'm going to stick here. I think when I appeared in front of you through YouTube's magic and you heard some of the things that satisfied some part of your need to understand that is how you stuck or some people didn't like it and left that is a community we were we are seekers we are those who were trying to figure out what are the mechanics those who didn't want to understand the mechanics who just wanted to say just give me the latest news <laughs> they have better reporters so we are seekers and this community has a great value how many communities have we ever seen where you have seekers who understand with such depth of knowledge? As much as I make, make cartoons, one doctor friend was confessing this to me, that you do make cartoons, but you have never left any detail out. So it is not that I dumb it down. I have never dumbed it down. I have just made it entertaining or easier to receive it. That's all. We are that group. And if this group becomes um, rusted because folks are just not playing decent to others, then that is wrong. Glenn says, can COVID cause anemia? Yes, it can. Th there are many reasons for anemia. The bone marrow inflammation can cause anemia. Blood shape change. We have done that discussion about a year ago that sometimes what happens is that the red blood cells morphology changes and that would make them less able to function correctly and more prone to destruction. So it can happen. There can be inflammatory outcome, the auto or to antibodies, which would then cause inflammation, which would then cause destruction. Spleen activation can occur. Liver inflammation can occur. So there can be many reasons. This is why it is important before you scare yourself, because before you become concerned, ask your doctor to do a workup of what is really wrong before you think how to, or before you feel where to place the where is the etiology? Get the workup done. No, I do not. Although they have started saying rebound, <laughs> which was very interesting. They have started saying rare rebound. But um, Colbert had a rebound. Biden had a rebound. Um, a few days ago, there was another prominent personality who also had a rebound <laughs> but as far as i can tell a lot of people are getting rebound they have inserted the word rare to kind of soften the blow crunchy bean says love your art appreciate your explanations over and over thank you <laughs> <laughs> John says cartoons are anatomically correct. So I'm feeling sad now because I made myself on this cartoon. And if that is my correct anatomy, <laughs> then I should be a little sad. So let's see. <laughs> this was Dr. Bean. 
with a virus <laughs> i know what you're saying <laughs> Michelle says I I wondered about the rare rebound. Yeah, this they quietly slipped that little word in there. Kelly says could rebound be the inflammatory stage. So I was going to actually talk about it that what could be the reasons for rebound. One reason as they've been saying is that it could be that they suppressed it for some time and they stopped it and virus was still hanging in there and then rebound. Uh, somebody was talking about mutation. So viruses do mutate, mutate in everyone, but mutation, rebound because of mutation is not a good thing. I don't think it is happening. Here is why. Re rebound because of mutation means virus was present the drug got it under control that put pressure on the virus to survive and it mutated that mutation caused the rebound if that is the case then number one it will happen during the drug it will not happen afterwards number two it will cause near new pandemics because of the amount of Paxlovid that is being given. Number three, if you give the Paxlovid to the same patient again, now the virus has escaped it. Why would it respond to it? So I don't think it is mutation or, or virus escaping this drug. It is really just not sufficient amount of drug or sufficient duration. And I can understand it may be different for each person, how long the virus lives in them. Normally, four or five days is sufficient but maybe in some people it is living longer. <laughs> Zach X is rare rebound equals Pfizer shareholders. Yes, I'm sure that they clapped. Yay, this is a good word. <laughs> rare. <laughs> Just add rare wherever... So rare has become the fix-all for um, such folks. So Andrew says that, can, could you please explain in a little more detail? So I had actually done a complete big discussion about it. I'll give you a very quick um, refresher. So what happens is that here, let's say we have a blood vessel. Inside the blood vessel, we have endothelial cells that are making the surfaces of the blood vessel. Then, of course, there are platelets which are tiny little plates. They're not this big compared to RBCs, but imagine. Now, what happens is, sometimes there are antibodies because of SARS-CoV-2 or because of vaccine. Those antibodies are actually attacking the virus, but their epitope so let's say here is the antibody and the antibody has this binding region. Let's make it look like I'm just making things up. Let's say the binding region is like this, meaning something that fits this region can bind here in this part. And imagine that this region was able to bind with SARS-CoV-2 somewhere. So this is SARS-CoV-2. Some part of SARS-CoV-2, spike proteins part or N protein or something, was able to fit in here. 
because of this binding, the B cell that makes this became activated. When that became activated, that B cell proliferated, that is more copies, and then it differentiated, that means it became mature and started making more antibodies. When it was doing this, imagine that this antibody binding region was also accidentally very similar to a place on platelet. Just by accident. And can it happen? Yes. This is what autoimmunity is. So now this B cell and its daughters are making tons of antibodies thinking we are making these little chemical weapons that are going to go and attack this virus. But these little proteins, when they are going through the blood, they are able to connect with the platelets. Or especially, for example, they found platelets factor 4. So when these get activated, whenever an antibody binds to the platelet factor 4, platelet factor 4s are tiny little molecules that are almost sailing with the platelet, like a big ship and then some ships sailing with it. Or if you see the space odysseys, there is a big ship and then there are some tiny ships with that. So when the antibody binds there, it causes local um, reaction, it would cause inflammation, but it would cause activation of the platelet. These platelet inside the blood vessel wall would now start binding with each other. And that is a clot. So this is a quick uh, mechanism for how clotting. Clotting can occur for other reasons too. For example, if the antibody is able to come and connect with the endothelial cells or parts of the cells, now that would cause local inflammation here and those inflammatory cells and proteins would then start clotting here. So many reasons, but eventually some antibodies in that area in the blood vascular system causing inflammation, activating the uh, clotting cascade. Holden says, do you think that what you experienced was severe magnesium death possible? But if that is the case, then I would not have recovered without taking magnesium. Teresa says, any news about the antiviral nose spray? I don't know. Um, we should see. We should read about that one. <laughs> Spike trees. See, this is what I love, that when we explain these things, then we start thinking about it. This, These thinkers are not in other groups. This is a very precious group for its excellence in understanding medicine. <laughs> so with this, let's break for today. It is 8 o'clock. There are more naked people ads here as well um, so thank you very much please like subscribe and share there are links in the description if you would like to buy dr bean plan there is a link for that it's 10 cents per video <laughs> that's really cheap and then you can buy me a coffee or you can use paypal or you can become part of substack or you can become part of locals you can become part of dr bean here youtube and thank you very much i would see you tomorrow <laughs>